there's multiple issues with creatinine, but we'll just start with um, staging of chronic kidney disease. The higher the creatinine, or the worse the estimated GFR, that does contribute to how likely someone is to progress to worsening stages of kidney disease, but it's very incomplete. And the level of the urine albumin is really integral to understanding how severe someone's kidney disease is. Now, the second topic is problems with creatinine itself. In average healthy people, it's a pretty solid test for kidney function, but because creatinine comes from muscle, its ability to quantify kidney function really falls down in people who have abnormal levels of muscle. So creatinine's not a great test for people who have uh, lots of muscle use. And it's even a bigger problem in people who are disabled, who are inactive. And that's the population we really worry about because people who have chronic disease and are fairly immobile are just not going to be making creatinine. Now, fortunately, we have an alternative. The alternative is cystatin C. And cystatin C is another blood test. It's used just like creatinine, but it doesn't come from muscle. And so the translation from the blood test to kidney function is pretty much the same across all people. And so it overcomes the limitations of creatinine. Now, the good thing for clinicians is they don't have to learn the units of a new test. It gets incorporated into a GFR estimate. And so often we'll have three GFRs, the creatinine, the cystatin C, and really in most patients, the best is the combination of the two. So when we bring in uh, a second measure, if we get a more precise GFR estimate using creatinine and cystatin C, then we just have a better number but it's still 60 to define CKD. And so in the new guidelines for staging the level of chronic kidney disease and for making really important decisions, we're recommending use of the combined creatinine-cystatin C equation.